Hey guys, see Drama Invasion here and welcome back to a new video. So this week there's been so many unexpected drama drops as well as loads of new drama productions, cast announcements, as well as wrapping of dramas and new materials released. So let's just jump on into it. If you haven't seen my channel before, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to all when you subscribe since YouTube doesn't show my videos up in your subscription feed if you don't. We'll also be covering the top 10 Doban um, dramas of 2021 near the end, as well as the iFung Fashion Awards. But first, let's talk about the two dramas that dropped. So first, we have Hot-Blooded Detective. This was also known as Detective Kong before. This is a Mango TV historical Republican drama. It's a detective drama starring Zhang Yujian and Liang Jia. This is a drama that I've been keeping on my watch list for a while, and I was quite surprised when it decided to air. This is a story about a young policeman and a coroner working together to expose a lot of scammers. There's a lot of sorcerers, so-called wizards in this world, and these people are actually all scammers. And they decide to crack down on these cases that so many people in the public are influenced by. And they end up teaming up, even though it's like a love-hate relationship at first. They end up falling in love and realize that there's something more sinister going on in their city. Once again, I advise you anything from Mango TV, leave it um, a couple weeks, half a month, or even up to a month if you want to binge watch it with proper subtitles. Even though they do put out subtitles, a lot of times it's by robots or the automatic translation. So a lot of things just don't make sense and the subtitles are very bad. But the good thing is that you can find it on Viki and I think they might have it subbed um, a little bit faster and better than Mango TV. Next drama to talk about is, of course, Ace Troops. This was rumored to be airing around January, but it turns out it ends up airing around Boxing Day, so December 26th. And it's an Aishi production with 40 episodes starring Johnny Huang, Xiao Zhan, and Zhang Chushi. This is an action military war drama. There's even a little cameo by actress Bai Lu. And after that tiny glimpse of seeing the two actors together, her and Xiao Zhan, I kind of want to see them in a drama now. As the title and genre suggests, this is a military drama. So it starts off with two guys who end up having a little rivalry. From the minute they met, they were kind of on par with everything, while Xiao Zhan's character is a little bit better. And they're both smart and interesting in their own ways. One is more hot-headed, while the other one is more calm, relaxed, and the observer type. But they're both quite skilled. They end up becoming best friends, but they fall in love with the same girl, Zhang Chushi's character. However, Xiao Zhan's character eventually marries a different girl, deciding to give it up for his buddy. And it's basically their journey of them as rookie soldiers and trying to make it to the top, making their troop the best in the country. So far, my thoughts on this was quite good. I liked the pacing. I only seen like two episodes since I have no time, but probably will complete it and catch up in a while. Okay, let's talk about drama wrap-ups. First off, we have Back For You. This is a 12-episode Aichi suspense drama. I'm thinking it will become a light-on series in either 2022 or 2023. Probably 2023, maybe, because of how many they released this year, and there's just so much in their catalog that's been filmed already. But this stars Angela Baby and Wang Anyu. Not much is known about this, but I believe it is set in Republican era times. And Cheng Xiao will also be in this drama as well. The next drama that wrapped up filming that I'm super excited to see is Chen Xiaoling. It's a Mango TV big historical drama, and it stars Zhang Yuxi and Tong Mangxi. This is a drama about the doom fate between two people of opposite sides. It's a wuxia fantasy drama. I think it's a shansha one as well with a demon sector and it's your classic love between two star-crossed lovers who can't be together because of the descendants on the good side and the evil side. Based off of some information, it's around 60 episodes now. I really do hope they cut it down to around 40 and maybe even less just because um, I really like Zhang Yushi, but because of the pacing and editing, just to like drag out the storyline, it really dims my enjoyment of dramas such as Stand By Me. The next drama is up there with one of my most anticipated dramas. It's the ingenious one, and it's a 2022 Aichi Yi drama production. 
starring Chen Xiao, Mao Xiaotong, and Tan Xiaotan. It's an adventure historical wuxia drama. This is about a young man who encounters a lot of different people on his journey and he forms a very close bond and friendship with a lot of them. One of them is the female lead who is an elf and she's very smart and they all have their own quirks and pros about them that makes them a good team. Eventually they all get entangled in a super deep case about genocides, tragedies of the past. And then it becomes a story about revenge and seeking out justice. City of Streamer also wrapped up. It's a romance Republican era drama and it stars Jing Tian and Timmy Shu. This is a drama that's set in Shanghai in the 20th centuries where there's warlords and unfortunately the female lead's family was basically messed up because of them. And now she wants to go on a journey to find revenge. She ends up approaching the male lead, which is the son of this family, and she becomes his tutor. Eventually, she starts catching feelings for him, and they work together to find out the truth about her family. Next drama is Mobai. It's an Aichi drama with around 25 episodes, and it's a friendship, comedy, romance, e-gaming drama starring Zhang Shuiying and Bi Wenjun. This is a drama about a student of the film academy and an online game god. They actually have the same dream of becoming an actor. But one of their favorite hobbies to do in their pastimes is play this online game. They join the same game and she's actually an excellent player as well. They end up working in real life and online to pursue their dreams and achieve their goals. I think it sounds very similar to Love O2O. So if you really like that drama, then you'll probably like this one as well. So keep an eye on it. Both the two are Dreamland of Ice. Part 1, Part 2 have released new posters, so the first part stars Chen Roshuan and Peng Xiaoran. Both dramas are about the Chinese national skating team. I think one is a figure skater and one is about the short track team. Part 2 of this is also going to be released around the Winter Olympics 2022 in Beijing and it stars Liang Jia and Oh Hao. They all have themes of friendship, motivation, family, and sports. They're about chasing dreams and trying to motivate you, as well as give us more realistic knowledge about the sports. It's going to be less heavy on romance compared to dramas like To Fly With You or Skate Into Love, and more focus on the sports. The next drama that wrapped up is Rocket Mom. It stars Yao Chen or Sabrina Yao. And Yao Chen is a Aichi 12 episode drama and it's about a mother who was in a rock band and a daughter that she never really knew. It's kind of a distant relationship and them trying to find each other again as well as bond over their love for music and rock. I love that Aichi dramas are literally so experimental and so out there. They're dappling with sci-fi, some horror, some rock music and different genres. I really like that about them and hopefully this will become a hidden gem of 2022 or 2023. Last but not least of the dramas that wrapped up filming is Trio in Chengdu. It stars Song Yi, Charmin She, and Li Chun. This is a drama that focuses on food, cismance, as well as romance and life friendship in general. These trio central female lead plots have been taking over Chinese entertainment and now being very popular in K-dramas as well. I really enjoyed this and I really hope that this one will be as good. We have a couple of posters for two romance films. The first one is called Stay With Me and it stars Ren Min and Shin Yun Lai. As the leading couple, the second leading couple is by Zhou Yutong and Chen Yu Wei. However, this one is a little bit more interesting to keep on your to watch list because it's about long distance relationships and the difficulties of it. It explores the themes of friendship, separation, and love for young people that are living far apart. This is going to hit theaters in February, but you'll probably have to wait a couple months since it's out of theaters for it to get English subbed and released worldwide. The second film which will air on February 14th is Don't Forget I Love You, starring Guli Naja and Jasper Liu. It's about two people who after an incident or for some reason, they didn't specify if it's an illness or anything, but one person forgets about the other person. 
And based off of the synopsis, it says, what if one day your lovers forgets you? Will you have the courage to restart and make him fall in love with you again? Once, twice, until a hundred times. Delicious Romance also announced that there will be a movie in production with the same leads, Li Chun, Zhang Hanyun, and Wang Zhu, who are all going to return. If you're looking for a food drama with some cis mans, then I definitely recommend this drama, even though it's taking a little bit of a long time to get subbed. I'll talk about it in my next reviews video, so stay tuned for that. So let's move on to the iPhone Fashion Awards. There wasn't too many stars since a lot of events closed up or many actors and actresses are rushing to finish filming for the end of the year. But some noticeable looks and people here were Shu Jiaqi or Kiki Shu. She had two outfits. The first one is like a bridal outfit with feathers. It also reminds me of um, Swan Lake type of vibes if you look at her hair and just the way it's styled in general. She looks beautiful as well as the second look, which is this almost golden dress. Too bad that we didn't get a close-up shot on it, but it's really nice and I'm happy to see her way more active now that she moved out of her past company and she's starting anew with this company. I think they're promoting her really well and she's been attending so many events, photo shoots and stuff like that. B1 June was also there with two looks. The first one is a trench coat look, while the other one is an all black classic look. Yang Binyan was also here and she wore this black dress with some gold on the top. It's all bedazzled and jeweled, and then the bottom is just plain, but she looks quite good. What do you think about these outfits? And they actually won two awards, so Yuan Bingyan and Bi Wen Jun were awarded for the Charismatic Actress and Actor of the Year Award for 2021 at the iPhone Fashion Choice event. We also have Wang Zuqi who won the New Actor of 2021 award and I'm so happy to see him receive some acknowledgement since I think from this year all of the new and rising actors. He gave me very Steven Jang vibes which someone I really love. I think his projects are interesting and even if they're basic, he makes it really good and all of his characters are done really well. So congrats to the actors and actresses. Let's move on to Doban's 2021 highest rated mainland Chinese dramas. So we have 10. Um, let's go from number 10 backwards to number one, even though it's listed from one to 10. In 10th place is The Message. Nine is The Rebel. 8 is The Imperial Corner, 7 is Remembrance, Things of Past, 6 is Ultimate Note, 5 is Delicious Romance, 4 is Like a Flowing River 2, 3 is Medal of the Republic, 2 is Minning Town, and 1 is Age of Awakening. I will do a top 10 um, popular Chinese dramas of 2021 later on as well as my personal top 10 so you can see and compare international viewers versus the Chinese mindset or Doban's rating in general which is more on higher quality scripts and actors rather than popularity. So hope you look forward to that video and enjoyed this video. If you want to donate on my Ko-fi page feel free to it's in the links in the description box below. I highly appreciate that and your support. Happy holidays, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.